With the Advantec subfloor assembly, you can be sure that you're building a reputation on something stronger. And the best builders, well, they may always stand apart, but they never stand alone. So ask yourself, are you bringing your A-game? Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Before the Build series. Yes, we're talking about details still, and we're moving up that foundation wall. Last time we uh, met, we talked about the basement footing slab um, interface with the bottom of the foundation wall. Well, today we're moving up that foundation wall, and we're talking about the water table. Water table is the area where the foundation meets the first floor frame, meets the first floor exterior wall, and all the fun stuff that happens in there, and where we switch from the concrete basement wall to that wood frame structure above so a lot of great stuff we're going to talk about control layers all the good stuff of course our good friend big red is here so without further ado let's look at that water table detail hey everybody i'm my good friend big red i got that section put up remember last time we talked about the footings well we're moving up the wall and Today, we're going to talk about this water table detail. Water table detail, I mean, that's what I call it. I'm sure a lot of people have first floor band joist area, multiple names, but basically it's, you know, where we switch from the foundation wall to our wood frame structure, roughly at grade. So that's where we're at. Let's uh, throw that detail up. Register the drawing here. And let's talk water table detail. So, there you go. Here's the top of the foundation wall that we spoke of. And this is a pretty typical scenario here, right? We talked about uh, the reinforcing in the footings and such and in the foundation wall. So there's our two bars that run horizontally through the foundation wall. And then we have this number four vertical bar here that, uh, and I believe it's on like 32 inch centers. But how do we attach that wood frame to the foundation wall? Well, in this case, we did what I call a double mud sill. So we have the lower two by six, and you can see that has an anchor bolt. It's a five eighths inch anchor bolt that gets bolted down. That obviously has a washer and such. Those are 32 inches on center and they're within 12 inches of every corner. And the purpose of the anchor bolt is basically to keep the house from ripping up off of the foundation or sliding across and sliding off the foundation. So that's what keeps the two intact. Um, you can see to get a little bit more head height, we did a double mud sill there that gets us three inches. And then we have our floor truss system. And in this case here, these I believe were 14 inch floor trusses. They're 24 inches on center, meaning that from this line to that line, right? 24 inches. Our floor sheathing here is a 7 8 inch Advantech. We bump that up because we bump that to the 24 inches. So that composite action of floor joist to floor sheathing, a lot of it depends on that spacing. And if we increase that spacing, say from the 16 to the 24 inches, while the code does allow three quarters of an inch, people like the tile association and stuff get really uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit nerdy on us and want to increase the size of that so that bumps up from three quarters to the seven eighths gives us a little stiffer floor we do have a three and a half inch flange width so we get a lot of good composite action in that these get a bead of adhesive that run down the floor joist before that advantage gets attached to that so that's our floor frame and then of course the wood wall above here, and in this case here, you see that's the bottom plate, and then we have a good old friend, the T-stud. Right, somewhere here, here we are. It's a two by six T-stud. 
wood frame and that's 24 inches on center so that matches our floor framing and then we have our zip R9 on the outside of that we have that's the sheathing there with the insulation in here and then we have our rain screen detail and then of course our exterior siding we have a screen mesh here down at the bottom with a two by cleat down there so that we don't get rodents wanting to migrate up tunnel through our rigid foam and make that a nice home somewhere in here have a nice burrow in our wall we don't want any of that as far as that thermal control remember we brought that rigid foam up the foundation wall and then we have our um, unfaced bat in the wall happening there well, to make this transition from here, we have that sprayed with a four inch, from the four inches, that measurement there of closed cell foam lock 2004G. So it has a GWP global warming potential of one or better. Uh, and then above grade here, we have Havelock blown wool insulation in our wall and then mixed with the R9 that gets us to I, don't know, I think we're at roughly you know 31 ish for the wall but our value doesn't mean as much to me as air tightness and we performed really really well on this house below passive house standards um, moisture control you can see we have our Sega Myrex vapor retarder that we lined the face of the wall with before we put up our gypsum board so we took care of our control layers there it's a it's a great little bulletproof wall that performs very well you got to remember this house here is in climate zone four if you're wondering exactly where that is that's columbia missouri and uh still a heating dominated climate although it's getting pretty close to tilting that scale and uh yeah two by six wall r9 rain screen our um oral true exterior siding on the outside which we're big fans of painted we got continuity in our insulation coming down the wall through the band joist and then that connects to our basement insulation we talked about the structural connections so there you have it Got a great little slideshow coming up, so enjoy the slideshow.